wow, maybe I was too easy on this game. I gave it a C plus in my impressions review. But trust me, there are way worse games than this. Ooh, in your face! Welcome to the rundown where I get to talk about the most hated Sonic game in recent memory. Your time has passed Sonic 06, it's no use. In these videos I spend time discussing and showing cool interesting aspects of game design and mechanics that I've researched over the years of playing popular franchises and flagship titles and also obscure games. Let's take a look at our first topic of the day. After playing and reviewing Sonic Boom, I continued to see that there's a natural hate for this game. It was Big Red Button, the developer of Sonic Boom, first time with the series and there was a lot of pressure to make a good Sonic game after the mixed reviews of Sonic Lost World. Wait a minute, hey, I really like that game, well, to each his own. But what really happened to this title? I mean, there was some potential in the concept phases and development, as some of the employees from the art team that designed Uncharted joined up in the mix. Ah, so that's where Sonic Scarf came from. It was so stupid looking. I love it. But instead of the newer version, or better version of Sonic Heroes, we get a game that's barely better than Sonic 06 and Sonic the Fighters. <sighs> That's bad. Well, there are two main factors in the game that caused its downfall. The game's overall scope and the development process hell that occurred due to an incoming deadline. Let's first talk about the overall game scope. Most reviewers were right about this game, in which saying that Sonic Boom doesn't know what it wants to be. It's chalked up as an adventure game, but it's way too vague of what it really is. In truth, this game is a tour de force, and it has a semi-open world with chunks of invisible walls and loosely filled caves with unfulfilling treasure and poor third dimensional platform design. So let's talk about what they really fucked up in this game. Let's get to the bare bones. What was truly wrong about Sonic Boom and its mechanics? Let's dig deeper. So to fully see the gameplay scope in Sonic Boom, I'm going to compare this game to another title that utilizes teamwork of the main heroes. And that is the GameCube edition of Sonic Heroes, within its own franchise of course. Sonic Heroes is another title that focuses on the teamwork of gameplay, and each level and section of the game is catered to the gameplay scheme of each type of character. For example, the pathway that requires characters that utilizes power in the midst of traveling this area you will see destruction objects and obstacles made for power to be used and designed for hard-hitting characters like Knuckles and Omega. Or the speed trial for Sonic and Shadow, like doing triangle jumps off a wall to get from point A to point B. What made this game fun was quickly using each ability of each character in a smart and fun way, and at the same time trying to beat the clock for a new record. This was made possible with the stages and playgrounds built to accommodate for speed, flight, and destruction. What Sonic Boom gets wrong is that the game's world design is only built around one thing, the platforming part of the game, and that's it. And the platforming is really super basic, just jumping and bounce pads. There's nothing in this game that makes any character feel any different except for the colors of the platform, which is a damn shame because there's so much potential for each character. And most of it is just pressing a button with a hammer or homing attacking random floating orbs. Nothing in Sonic Boom justifies having four characters if the level design doesn't require it and explores their characteristics. Now for the combat, Sonic Boom suffers from the same problem as traveling from before in which it's lacking in much detail. Nothing in combat gives you satisfaction here. When defeating an enemy, it's more like a relief or to get the combat over with and less likely a victory. Enemies only have three types of functions that they take a lot of hits in combat and it becomes more troublesome and repetitive later on in the game. You can easily use your energy leash to grab on shields and smaller enemies, but the execution is lacking an impact. 
Pretty much everything in combat is lacking impact and another problem is with the combat filler system. Meaning and defined, combat that exists just to be there, another way to fill a checkbox from a feature list in game development. Meaning combat doesn't mean anything at all except for being another feature. Now let's go back to Sonic Hero. Combat here is quick, solid, and lasting impact. When you do a homing attack or a power dunk on enemies, they die faster, respawn and stagger, and power dunks are just badass and feels vicious and a move that Knuckles would actually use. Combat always needs to feel rewarding and cool, but also responsive and fun to the player so that he or she can continue playing without any annoyance. Sonic Boom does not have any of that and that is why it suffers. So in conclusion, like a high school essay, Sonic Boom failed because the game's scope was so big that the designers forgot to make the core gameplay lasting and enjoyable. Things like combat, travel, and world design suffer under this fault because core gameplay didn't have the game fully built around it. Just bits and pieces that worked for some platform puzzles, but the rest of the game felt like a giant alpha level construct. Aside from the glitches and game breaking freezes, I played the entire game and understood what big red button wanted to do. You see, Sonic Boom, this game was supposed to be, or supposed to have, the world they're supposed to introduce you to all these new characters in the Sonic Boom universe, while trying to rebuild the whole city or town that was damaged by Eggman and Lyric. So basically, Sonic Generation stages recovery mechanic after beating each level, and Sonic Heroes teamwork for exploration and combat. This game isn't so bad by any means at all. It's okay for one playthrough, but but it's a game that needs to be played by every designer that needs to take heed from the actual core gameplay itself to learn and to build around that. Trust me, there are a lot of games worse than this. Every game has a subjective outcome by its players, reviewers, and creators. Play the game for yourself and judge it, but don't do it that takes away your hard earned money. Trust me, this game is not worth a full price, medium price, or even a half low price. You can rent it and check it out for yourself. This is a game that you need to keep your eye on. And learn from future designers what not to do and what to prepare for when you have deadlines. Well that's it for today's video, check us out next time as we continue with the same topic on Sonic Boom's development, as we compare it to another game that damn near had the same development process but different results. I put the stats together head to head in our next video, so stay tuned and thanks for watching. Peace. Alter Element Games, where gameplay is everything.